Bonjour, this is Fabulously Delicious, the French food podcast. This is the podcast that's all about the cuisine that is said to have founded modern cooking. French ingredients and dishes have been the starting block for many of the world's best chefs and cooks. And on Fabulously Delicious, you'll learn all about those dishes and ingredients, as well as get to know more about fabulous French foodies. I'm your host, Andrew Pryor. Enchanté. Enchanté. My life changed when I competed on MasterChef Australia, and now I'm living my best life right here in the French countryside. Cooking, eating, meeting wonderful locals, food producers, chefs, home cooks, drinking amazing wines, eating some of the over, which believe there's more than 1,500 French cheeses. Mm, Yum. And sharing these fabulous experiences with you, my fabulously delicious audience. I hope you're enjoying them. In this episode, we dive into the extraordinary life of Albert Roux, the legendary French chef who, alongside with his brother Michel, transformed British gastronomy and left an indemnable mark on the world of haute cuisine, from his humble beginnings in a small village in Burgundy to the glamorous kitchens of London. Albert's journey is one of resilience, innovation and a passion for food. We'll explore his early career, his culinary rise and the lasting impact he made through his Michelin-starred restaurants, mentorships of renowned chefs, and his unwavering dedication to French culinary tradition. So sit back, turn up the volume. If you're not driving, pour yourself a glass of wine, break a baguette, add a bit of sausage on maybe, and some of that delicious cheese, and enjoy today's episode of Fabulously Delicious, the story of Albert Roux. Albert Henri Roux was born on a crisp autumn day on Tuesday, the 8th of October, 1935, in the scenic town of Emur en Brienne, located in southern Burgundy, in the Saône Loire region of France. Nestled in a picturesque landscape, it's renowned for its beauty, and it's actually officially listed as one of the most beautiful villages in all of France. Perched on top of a hill, more than 400 metres above sea level, the town offers sweeping views of the surrounding countryside. At the time of Albert's birth, it had a population of just 1,062 people. The town, with its cobbled streets, medieval architecture and quiet charm, seemed worlds away from the bustling kitchens where Albert would later build his name. It was here, in this peaceful pastoral setting, that Albert's journey into the culinary world began. Albert was born into a family with a rich culinary heritage. His father, Henri Roux, was a third-generation charcutier, skilled in the art of preparing and preserving meats, a profession passed down through the family. However, despite this esteemed background, Albert's early life was far from smooth. Henri Roux unfortunately had a gambling problem, and it was a habit that led to the downfall of the family's charcuterie business. Henri's financial troubles spiraled out of control, eventually causing the family to lose their business, their savings, and their social standing. The family declared bankruptcy, forcing them to leave town and seek new opportunities elsewhere. After the upheaval caused by the World War II, Albert's parents, Henri and Germain, relocated to the family to saint mandé a suburb in the esteemed part of Paris. Life in the bustling outskirts of the French capital was vastly different from the peaceful countryside of Berg. The move represented a fresh start for the family, though it also marked a difficult chapter in Albert's life. As his father continued to struggle with his financial troubles, in the years that followed, the family's dynamics shifted once again. When Albert's younger brother Michel was born in, on the 19th of April, 1941, the bond between Albert and Michel would grow stronger over the years, setting the stage for one of the most iconic sibling duos in the culinary world. However, their childhood was marked by the absence of their father, who left the family when Albert was 14 years old. Henri's departure, caused by his unresolved financial difficulties, left a blasting impact on young Albert. This event may have been one of the reasons why Albert started to work in the kitchen at such a young age. Though he initially considered a religious life, and even flirted with the idea of becoming a priest. The practices of supporting his family soon took precedence, and Albert's culinary career was set in motion. At 14, Albert began his first foray into the world of professional cooking. He started his apprenticeship with his godfather, 
who had a prestigious position as chef for Wallace the Duchess of Windsor in Paris. It was through this family connection that Albert gained entry into the world of haute cuisine. His godfather recognised that young Albert's potential and helped him secure an apprenticeship in the kitchen where he would begin learning the skills that would later define his career. Albert's early culinary education was rooted in tradition and discipline, but his career would take a pivotal turn when, at the age of 18, he travelled to England to continue his apprenticeship. He moved to the grand estate of Viscountess Nancy Astor, located at Cliveden House, a stately home in Berkshire in England. The move was a significant one, transporting Albert from the bustling streets of Paris to the verdant English countryside. During this time at Cliveden, Albert worked diligently refining his skills and learning how to navigate the complexities of running a high-end kitchen. One of Albert's most memorable moments in this period was when he prepared casserole eggs for the United Kingdom's Prime Minister of the time, Harold Macmillan. The eggs, transported via a shaky freight elevator, amusingly turned into scrambled eggs by the time they reached the Prime Minister's table. Albert's apprenticeship with the Astor family was a formative experience, one that set him on a path to further success. After working at Cliveton, he went on to cook for the French Embassy in London, gaining further exposure to elite circles. And upon completing his apprenticeship, Albert fulfilled his military service obligation by serving as a cook at the officer's mess in Algeria. This experience not only honed his ability to work under pressure, but it also gave him a taste for the adventurous lifestyle that would later fuel his passion for fishing and travel. After completing his military service, Albert returned to Paris, where he took on the role of sous chef at the British Embassy. Albert soon returned to the United Kingdom, where he accepted a position as the private chef of Major Peter Cazalet, a well-known racehorse trainer. Cazalet was a prominent figure in British society, and Albert worked for him for eight years, during which he further refined his cooking techniques and built invaluable relationships with high society. His time with the Cazalet family laid the foundation for his future ventures, including his eventual foray into the world of Michelin star dining. At the tender age of just 17, Albert married Monique Merle, his childhood sweetheart, in 1959. Together, they had two children, Michelle Rue Jr., who would later follow in his father's footsteps, and Danielle. Family was important to Albert, and his relationship with his brother, Michelle, and his children would later define much of his professional life. In 1967, the Rue brothers, Albert and Michelle, opened their first restaurant, Le Gavroche, on Lower Sloan Street in London. This moment marked the beginning of a culinary revolution. The brothers had managed to secure financial backing from the Gazelay family, thanks to the close relationship that Albert had developed during his years as their private chef. Le Gavroche, from the very beginning, was a bold statement, a fusion of French culinary tradition with the sophistication of London's elite dining scene. Le Gavroche's opening night was nothing short of spectacular. The guest list read like a who's who of London society. Celebrities, aristocrats, and even royalty graced the event. The notable figures such as Charlie Chapman and Ava Gardner in attendance. Outside, the streets were lined with double-parked Rolls Royces, apparently, a testament to the restaurant's immediate appeal to London's upper class. Inside the walls of Le Gavroche were adorned with works of art by renowned artists such as Chagall, Miro and Dali, blending the world of fine dining with fine art in a way that felt effortless and natural. The name Le Gavroche, meaning street urchin in French, symbolised the brothers' humble beginnings and their desire to create something unpretentious but extraordinary. The menu at Le Gavroche featured a level of sophistication rarely seen in London at the time. In those early days, Albert's wife Monique played a crucial role in the restaurant's success. She would smuggle foie gras, poulet de bresse and chalons duck across the English Channel, as these luxury ingredients were not readily available in the UK. This covert operation would actually be the catalyst for a regular supply chain of French ingredients 
revolutionising the availability of fine products in London's restaurants. Through their connections with the Rungus market in Paris, the Rue brothers were able to import the best of the French produce, and in doing so, they helped raise the standard of fine dining in the UK. Le Gavros quickly gained a reputation for excellence, becoming a favourite of Queen Mother Elizabeth. The restaurant was soon recognised for its culinary achievements, earning its first Michelin star in 1974. Just a few years after opening, that same year, Albert was elected a Master Cook of France and became one of the founding members of the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts. His contributions to the culinary world extended beyond the kitchen as he worked to improve culinary education and promote health and eating through initiatives like the Adopt-A-School program, which aimed to teach children about food and cooking. In 1972, the Rue brothers opened another legendary restaurant, the Waterside Inn in Bray, Berkshire. This establishment would go on to make history by becoming the first restaurant outside of France to maintain three Michelin stars for 28 consecutive years, a feat unparalleled in the world of fine dining. The Waterside Inn and Le Gavroche obtained their first Michelin stars simultaneously in 1974, and by 1982, Le Gavroche became the first restaurant in the UK to be awarded three Michelin stars. That same year, the restaurant moved to Mayfair, further cementing its place in the pantheon of great dining establishments. The Rue Brothers' partnership, whilst incredibly successful, eventually saw them going their separate ways in terms of the business. In 1986, they divided their ventures, with Albert taking control of the Gavroche and Michelle overseeing the Waterside Inn. However, their legacy continued to thrive. Over the years, more than 700 chefs trained under the Rue Brothers, many of whom would go on to become Michelin-starred chefs themselves. Gordon Ramsay, Marco Pierre White, Pierre Hoffman and Marcus Waring are just a few of the culinary giants who pass through the kitchens of the Rue Brothers. It's no wonder that Albert and Michelle are often referred to as the godfathers of modern haute cuisine in the UK. Heston Blumenthal even famously called them the Beatles of gastronomy. Albert had a key eye for talent and was known for being both a demanding and nurturing mentor. He once said of Gordon Ramsay, he was talented, no doubt, but a bit of a hellraiser. You couldn't control him, but you couldn't ignore him either. Ramsay, like many others, flourished under Albert's guidance, proving that Albert had an uncanny ability to spot potential and push people towards greatness. Bonjour, bonsoir, fabulous listeners. If you're enjoying this delicious journey with us on Fabulously Delicious, I've got a small favour to ask you, and it would make a huge difference please take a moment to rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening, especially if you're on Apple Podcast. Your five-star rating and a fabulous review will help bring even more food lovers into our French culinary adventures. Merci beaucoup for your support and for being part of this amazing community. Dreaming of the perfect Paris food experience? Well, my book, Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city, is exactly what you need to explore the culinary gems of Paris. From cosy boulangeries to decadent patisseries, bustling markets to hidden wine bars, the guide has all the must-visit spots to make your Paris trip unforgettable. You can grab your copy at andrewpriorfabulously.com and even get a signed and a, and a beautiful gift wrap version. Or if you prefer, it's also available on Amazon, including a Kindle version for instant access. Bon appetit and happy reading. Albert spoke often of chefs he trained, sometimes good and sometimes not so. He said of Gordon Ramsay, I recognised straight away that Gordon would go a long way. Of Marco Pierre White, Albert said in a 2010 interview, We don't talk. No, he is truly a talented man, and a man who used to call me his godfather, but he's put a chip on his shoulder. White said about Albert, 
in his autobiography, Albert employing me was without doubt one of the defining moments of my life. I won't hear a word said against the Rue Brothers. In addition to running his Michelin starred restaurants, Habao expanded his influence through various other ventures. He opened the Couchon Rose, a charcuterie run by his sister, Lilianne, and the Boucherie La Martane, a butcher shop. He also ventured into catering, patisserie, and a restaurant supply business, which helped sustain the demand for high quality French ingredients in London. Albert even opened a boutique hotel in London, further expanding his business empire. In the 80s, Albert appeared on Take Six Chefs, a cooking show on TV, and he followed this up by a series called At Home with the Rue Brothers, which he did with his brother Michel on the BBC in 1987. Albert's impact on the culinary world was not limited to restaurants and businesses. In 1984, he and his brother established the Rue Scholarship, an annual competition designed to find the best young chef in the UK. The winner of the scholarship is awarded the opportunity to train in any three michelin star restaurant in the world with all the expenses paid. The scholarship has become one of the most prestigious culinary competitions in the UK, with winners often going on to achieve significant success in their own careers. Albert wanted to create restaurants that were not focused on obtaining stars, and so he created Chez Rue Limited chain of restaurants with his then-wife Cheryl. These restaurants included the Grey Walls Hotel, Rue Hotel Langamaroo, Chez Rue, and also opened two co-branded restaurants with his son, Michel Rue Jr. His thoughts behind these restaurants, he said, was, I want to recreate the kind of restaurant I remember in my hometown, offering good and honest local cuisine, the kind of place where you can go to eat without asking your banker's permission. In 1986, Albert obtained an honorary doctorate from Bournemouth University Council. His first book was released in 1987 and called The Rue Brothers New Classic Cuisine. Then in 1988, he and his brother released La Patisserie de Fraise Rue. These books were followed up by the 1991 Rue Brothers Cooking for Two, the 1993 Rue Brothers on Patisserie, and the 1994 The Good Cuisine of the Rue Brothers. And then finally, in 2006, Albert produced Glamour Cakes, his final book. After divorcing Monique in 2001, Albert married his second wife, Shell Smith, in 2006. The Rue family were involved for many years with the Clink Association. Albert was the patron. Clink restaurants are located in UK prisons, and all the food there is prepared and served by inmates in training, giving them the skills to find work outside of the prison system upon their release. Albert was known as a very passionate fisherman. He would travel around the world to pursue the best spots to fish at. In particular, he loved fishing in Scotland. He said of this, For me, the highlands and the islands of Scotland are paradise. I can spend whole days there without catching anything, but I continue to enjoy every second. I am a lover of nature and fishing, which allows me to access some of the most beautiful isolated spots in the world. In 2002, Albert would become a member of the Order of the British Empire. And then, in France in 2005, he would obtain a Knight of the Legion of Honour. Albert and Michel Roux Sr. were jointly given the Lifetime Achievement Award by the San Pellegrino World's Best 50 Restaurants. Albert divorced his second wife, Cheryl, in 2016, after 10 years of marriage, and then Two years later, in 2018, he married Maria Rodriguez. Sadly, Albert died at the age of 85 years old on Monday, the 4th of January, 2021, less than a year after his younger brother, Michel's death. Albert's son, Michel Jr., took the reins of Le Gavroche and ran the restaurant from 1991 until he recently closed it in 2024, after running for more than 56 years. The restaurant's last day of trading was 13th of January, 
2024, Michelle Jr. said of his father at the time of his death, He was a lover of life and that his passion for making people happy through his cuisine will be greatly missed. He was a mentor for so many people in the hotel industry and a real inspiration for aspiring chefs, including me. Planning a trip to France, why not escape the usual tourist spots and explore the stunning French countryside? I invite you to come and join me for a truly unique culinary adventure in my VN residency cooking experience. Stay in our beautiful two-bedroom townhouse in the heart of Montmorillon, a charming town where you can wander through local markets, discover quaint galleries, and enjoy delightful restaurants and bars. Together, we'll explore neighbouring towns, visit historic sites, take day trips to Limoges or the chateaus of the Loire, and so much more. And of course, the highlight, an immersive all-day French regional cooking class with me here in my home kitchen. Each residency includes accommodation, a warm welcome apparel, and a fantastic opportunity to experience true French hospitality. Residencies run from May to October, so come and enjoy the magic of French cuisine and culture with me, Andrew Pryor. For more details, visit andrewpryorfabulously.com and I can't wait to welcome you here. Are you following along with us on Instagram? If not, you're missing out on a treasure trove of fabulous content about French food and life here in France. Join our fabulously delicious community and dive deeper into the flavours, stories and experiences that make French cuisine so special. Follow me now at Andrew Pryor Fabulously on Instagram and threads to stay connected. Let's explore the culinary wonders of France together. That's it for another episode of Season 4 of Fabulously Delicious. Before we go, I just wanted to say a quick shout out to one of my loyal listeners, Athena, who messaged me recently. Thanks, Athena, for your lovely message of support. I'm so glad that you found and enjoy the podcast, and I hope it's always going well as it can be at this time. Hope you enjoy this and future episodes. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for listening, and remember, you know what my motto is. Whatever you do, do it fabulously. Merci beaucoup, and bon appétit.